airline company executives say they are ready to hit the skies and meet customers in person. They're suddenly optimistic that business travel is poised to rebound despite the rise of COVID-era work-at-home features such as Zoom. Now, those sentiments were echoed by executives from Qatar Airways, IAG and Wanda Air at a panel at the Qatar Economic Forum. Even as air travel slowly rebounds with the rollout of vaccines gathering pace in most major economies, Getting business travel back on track is a key objective for airlines since the premium seats are such a big profit contributor. Well, as airline executives remain hopeful about a rebound in business travel, let's discuss the realities with Derek Nseko. He is the founder of Airspace Africa. Great to have you with us today, uh, Mr. Nseko. Now, across the world, uh, what we're seeing right now is that travel regulations continue to change on a daily basis, uh, we have the 14-day quarantine, the required PCR test, vaccine certificates. One moment they're in place, the next they're lifted. So travel restrictions have certainly had an impact uh, on demand in, in, in light of this. How is this shaping the outlook for a rebound uh, in air travel going forward? Yes, thank you for having me. And uh, these travel restrictions are definitely the key drivers of the rebound, uh, not just for travel, but for tourism as well. And uh, uh, the International Air Transport Association has been very vocal about what exactly the industry needs uh, to, uh, to get these uh, protocols and everything in line. And what is very extremely important is that industry and government uh, come together and align themselves uh, around these protocols. Uh, the vaccination and the testing regime around the world uh, is, is very uncoordinated and the restrictions uh, between countries, especially for cross-border travel, are, uh, are up and down and the, the outlook of travel is extremely uncertain as a result of that. And uh, what's, what's extremely important at the moment is, 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 is for different countries to adopt a more streamlined approach uh, towards these travel protocols and for us to come together and coordinate uh, in order to have uh, a, a uniform uh, a, a travel regime across uh, Africa and the rest of the world. Uh, at the moment, uh, even the transit experience is a, is a headache for passengers. Uh, the cost of, of traveling is extremely high uh, given the high cost of, of, of these tests and the high cost of vaccines. Yeah, so it's also important to make uh, testing and vaccination more affordable and accessible for passengers around the world uh, in order for, for, for us to drive down the cost of travel as it is at the moment. Uh, so uh, the rebound is a, a very slow process, uh, but uh, there's positive signs at the moment uh, around the world, but it's largely driven by how fast and how efficient uh, we can get to vaccinate uh, the majority of our population. Mm. Well, in light of all of this, you have to ask, do you agree with the uh, airline executives' optimism uh, that we will see a, a rebound in business travel uh, despite the rise of those COVID fixes, uh, fixes we've seen at home, such as Zoom uh, meetings, for example? Yeah, I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm not as optimistic as, as they are. Uh, it's, it's a fact that business travel is extremely important to airline revenues. In fact, about 10% uh, of all passengers in the world travel by business, but uh, more than 30% of airline revenues come from uh, the business passengers. Uh, but it's also true that uh, the world has changed fundamentally and the way we do business has, has changed in the past one year or so. And uh, meetings and uh, in person are not as important as they once were. We figured out ways uh, to do business uh, through virtual platforms and through the application of technology. And uh, even considering the impact of, of COVID-19, uh, we have uh, to presume that businesses around the world and business leaders will be smarter in the way that they approach travel as well. Uh, if There's a lot of meetings that uh, don't necessarily have to happen in person. There's no doubt but physical interaction and even the social aspect has a part to play in business around the world. But in the long term, uh, I believe that uh, business travel is uh, going to be more significantly impacted uh, than, le than leisure travel. Mm. Now, 
as you mentioned, uh, forecasting uh, demand for the second half of this year or this year as a whole will be extremely difficult. But there are, there are analysts that uh, are saying that there is a slow and sustained recovery uh, in the sector, one that is occurring more quickly in domestic markets. Do you agree with that assessment uh, and do you see the same trend across most markets? Yes, and uh, I, I don't just have to agree with that. In fact, the numbers uh, really tell us that uh, uh, the recovery in aviation and uh, the significant part uh, of, of travel happening, uh, even in Africa and not just the rest of the world, uh, is really being led by uh, the countries uh, around the world that uh, have a large domestic market that have a significant travel within uh, their own borders. Uh, if, if you look at the airlines that have dominated the African continent in the past year, the top 10 airlines in Africa in terms of traffic include domestic airlines in South Africa, the likes of uh, Flight Surfair, the likes of Mango, and Com A are some of the biggest airlines in Africa in the past one year in terms of, of traffic. And this just uh, indicates that uh, domestic travel has been uh, the most significant form of travel in Africa in the past one year. Uh, obviously, there's reasons for that because uh, the restrictions uh, uh, that are affecting uh, the international travel and cross-border travel are not exactly applicable on a, on a domestic basis, and that, that really helps. Uh, but uh, travel uh, generally is uh, being driven and being led by, uh, by the domestic carriers at the moment. Mm. Well, another interesting uh, trend that we've also seen is there's been a repositioning uh, of air cargo within the aviation industry. How important is the cargo business, uh, especially to a recovery in the sector? And how will we see this new development impacting how airlines do business going forward? Yes, and a very good question. That uh, cargo has, has become extremely important. It's uh, it's, it's, it's somewhat just uh, walked out of the shadows and, and, and become a significant part of, uh, of the airline business. At the moment, as we speak, air travel uh, from, uh, from the month of April was up 12% uh, from 2019 levels in the same month. Air travel right now in terms of demand is much higher than pre-COVID pre levels. In fact, Africa is experiencing the largest growth around the world uh, for cargo demand we have a, a higher cargo demand. It's an uptake of about 30% at the moment of the African continent. And we've, it's been growing significantly for about four consecutive months. And uh, there's, there's so many reasons behind this. Obviously, we've changed uh, the way that we do a lot of things. And uh, through the COVID pandemic, uh, e-commerce has grown hugely as an industry. Of course, the capacity uh, of cargo is down based uh, merely on the fact that uh, passenger airplanes are not flying around the world and uh, they do carry a significant amount of cargo in their bellies. But there's been a significant increase in cargo capacity uh, through the conversion of, of aircraft uh, from passenger to freighter and through the purchasing of more, more cargo aircraft by various airlines around the world. We've seen that in Africa as well. Kenya Airways uh, converted the 787. Uh, that was initially meant for passengers into a cargo aircraft. Uh, Ethiopian Airlines converted about 25 uh, uh, passenger aircrafts into cargo aircraft. Uh, so, uh, and, and uh, that is significant as well to, to the bottom line. So that this is the precise reason why Ethiopian Airlines was able uh, to not just survive the pandemic, but to even go on and make a profit uh, so the cargo business is, is no longer uh, the insignificant sibling of, of the more gl glamorous passenger air travel. It's become extremely important to the airline business and, and, and the smart airlines around the world are starting to adapt to that. Mm, quite right. Well, thank you so much uh, for your insights, uh, Mr. Nseko. We certainly look forward to having you back on the show. That, of course, is Derek Nseko, founder of Airspace Africa.